so you guys, this week we are talking about the amazing John C. Maxwell. Um, so when we were talking about webinar topics, we said, all right, we said, how about let's talk about uh, John Maxwell. And he is an incredible North American author. He doesn't, he's not very, very popular on social media. Um, he's got a couple YouTube videos out there. I think he's probably in his 70s now. Um, but he's just this leadership professional that has written book upon book upon book. Um, my favorite book of his is The 16 Laws of Invaluable Growth. Um, and that's a book I think I probably read once a year. And um, the, But the one that we're going to talk about today is um, The 16 Undeniable Laws of Communication. Um, and so I'm going to send for you guys, because I had it pulled up this morning, um, a link to this book. Uh, and this is just a phenomenal, phenomenal book to really give you the principles of effective communication. There's 16 in his book. I'm going to do the best that I can to summarize them. But I would like you guys to chime in because the angle that I'm really trying to take when talking about this, and Christian knows this book, he knows John Maxwell as well, so um, Christian's going to provide me some feedback, but really truly for this is that how do we connect what he's saying about communication to communicating ourselves into the job marketplace, um, into future employers, into interviews, into what we're doing on social media, and right now, I really, truly, wholly believe that, um, I really, truly believe that right now, books like these, writings like these about our communication skills and our emotional intelligence is what everybody needs to double, triple, quadruple down in your focus. So I think there's two areas of focus in your world right now that every single human being should be looking at is one, artificial intelligence, is that you should be looking at what's being developed, what's it doing, how it can help me become the, it's not the 2.0 version of yourself. This is like the 10.0 version of yourself. Are we on like iPhone 15 right now? This is like the 15.0 version of yourself, right? So we in the past, you would go to school, you would get an education and your brain would retain information. You would move forward in this world based on how much information you could retain and you could dictate out to people. So the people that could retain a lot of information and organize it in a way that they can communicate it, those are the ones that in theory get ahead in the world. But this brain and this sponge of retention is all of a sudden gonna be less relevant because artificial intelligence is going to literally be at our fingertips to provide us millions and millions of data points that we could never retain up here. So the pressure is now on for what we're going to talk about today. Our ability to communicate all of the data that will be in our world. So we're going to be able to, and, you know, I, I had a, I had a group, a women's group last night, and we were talking about a, a YouTube um, video. And now there's a plugin on YouTube and it utilizes chat GPT where you go to a YouTube video and you say, please summarize this video for me. You click a button and it gives you a summary of the video. You don't even have to listen to the video. It was a 45 minute talk. I didn't have time to listen to it. So I could get it and it gave me, I think, six different formats. I could get it in a written summary. I could get it in bullet points. I could choose how many bullet points. I could get it headers with summaries. Um, so it just goes to show you is that the access to information is taking off like a rocket ship. We have to make sure that we're utilizing because if not, your competitor, your neighbor, your coworker, who is utilizing and understanding this technology is going, could be ahead of you. So first is understanding and using, utilizing all this technology and getting rid of that dialogue, as I said before, 
of saying, oh my gosh, what is this world coming to? You know, technology, it's taking over this artificial intelligence thing. I don't understand it. Well, if you don't take the time to learn it, then somebody else is going to learn it. And it's going to take that job from you. It's going to take that future from you. It's going to take that. So dig your feet in and start understanding this technology and how you can, how it can help you. So that's point number one. But I talked about the sponge in the brain and all the things that how much we can retain and is our value. That was really our, our bank. And now what's going to be, and as I think about our kids, as I think about what we're going to teach them, is that it really truly puts intense pressure on our ability to communicate on our emotional intelligence so you have all the data at your fingertips but what is going to get you ahead is your ability to communicate your experiences the information whatever area you're going in to focus on is that before maybe you could only find a job within hospitality or within you know some industry that was related to cruising and all of a sudden you can use technology to connect the dots for you to say okay how do i take my experience and connect it to a job in you know this chain of restaurants and it's going to give you all of the talking points and then you being able to spit those out in a way that people understand so that's what i i don't think that we're going to get through all 16. we may have to to be continued this or we'll follow it up in the blog post but as i was looking through the content of what i'm going to talk about i was like oh my gosh this is a lot uh, so i'll do my best um, but i don't care if we don't get through all 16. I care that you guys are getting what you need out of this and that you're asking questions. If you have questions, you're poking holes and stuff, Christian, please feel free to add anything. But I want everybody to really understand the importance and the weight of this isn't just have good communication skills. This is going to be your rocket fuel. This is going to be the thing that propels you if you can really, truly become an excellent communicator because the data is at your fingertips so the first first part so first get the audio book listen to it um, read the physical book mark it up do it the old-fashioned way and have that whole collection of john maxwell books on your get it in your home your mother language i'm sure he's translated i think his invaluable laws of growth is translated in like practically the same number of languages as the bible um because it's like up there in the leadership development world um christian do you have anything else to add about john no i mean it's gonna ring a bell because it's his knowledge has become so commercial. I'm not in yeah. bad just in the sense that it's at everyone's fingertips and it's reachable. So of course it's going to ring a bell. And because a lot of people have taken that down that path as well, they have ad adapted and adopted it to their uh, philosophy as well. So a lot of it is going to ring a bell to a lot of us, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. Yeah. He's kind of like the the godfather he's like the original the og of all this stuff so there's all these trendy youtubers that have knocked off this and put it in a different form but that's irrelevant to him because i think he's he's just happy that it's getting out there um so the first one is um the first one is really really interesting and this is kind of a complicated concept to understand his first law is called the law of the lid um the law of the lid and basically the concept behind this is that your leadership abilities determines your level of effectiveness as a communicator okay so people can argue with this or not but he's basically saying that you are like a jar and you have a lid on that jar if you are not improving your leadership skills on a daily weekly monthly basis so if you were a division head or if you were a leader on board a ship and now you're on land you need to ensure that you are continuing to develop your leadership skills there is beyond access to leadership material that's out there i like to listen to leadership stuff that has very different perspectives so getting stuff from Simon Sinek, which is Leaders Eat 
Eat Last, Daniel Coyle, Culture Code, um, all different leaders across the gamut, business, like I listened to Grant Cardone, which he's a very dramatic, drastic leader, aggressive. And then I listen to people like Tony Robbins and Sage Robbins who are very empathetic leaders. Um, so I think it's good to get your leadership skills from a variety of different people because this allows the lid to be taken off and you to grow, 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 grow. As you see what other leaders are doing, this is a direct correlation to your ability to communicate effectively. So as a former crew member, the more that you can listen to influencers, take courses, get certifications, enhance your skills, these are things that as you transition to the land-based marketplace will allow you, and think about also the leadership skills that you learned on board a cruise ship. They're very structured. They're very military, militaristic, marine. They have this very, very harsh direct, this is how it is, and this is this is what you do. From SQM to USPH to Coast Guard to da 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 this is the rule. There's no neg negotiation around the rule. This is the standard and off. That's not a leadership style that's going to work on land. And so you have to go, hey, how do I take this real beautiful superpower of what I got on board a ship and how do I adapt it to what a land-based leadership style is needed right now. So make sure that you recognize the qualities that you have and what you learned on board a ship, but also that you're understanding what other gaps that you need because your communication style and what you learned on ships in terms of being a leader and how you talk to people can be should be very, very different for what it is on land. I'm not disregarding what your ship experience is. I'm just going, hey, you need to polish it and continue to polish it because your communication style is going to change once you start listening to different leaders. Uh, so the law of the lid. You can only be as effective communicator as much as you're learning and you're growing. OK, so I think it's a really great analogy. Um, so that's number one. Number two is the law of connection. And you guys in our blog post this week, most likely we'll do this summary. So you guys will have a, a chance to like look at the, the bullets that we're talking to. So the law of connection. Communicators must connect with their audience. And you they must connect with their audience on an emotional level to be able to effectively convey their message, right? You guys know when you have spoken or watched a leader communicate and when they speak with such emotion and such genuine connection to you that you want to follow them you want to do whatever they're telling you and then you listen to other leaders and i think if you go back and look at like old 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 like jeff bezos and steve jobs videos who they were public speaking as leaders in the beginning is laughable to who they are now because the both of those gentlemen are very um even elon musk like in the beginning they're very do, 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 and they had to develop their leadership skills to have this emotional connection to people where on the other side me and christian actually we're very emotional communicators and so i always lead with my feelings I always lead with um you know with what could connect someone on an emotional level, but really, truly, you need that. It can't be cold. It can't be frigid. It can't be your communication has to have emotion. So as you're looking at connecting to potential employers, you have to make sure that during interviews, during networking events, that you're sharing compelling stories that are going to make people, they're not bragging stories, it's stories that's going to make people laugh, it's going to highlight your emotional intelligence. It's going to help you connect to diverse group of people. So as you're thinking about interviews and your preparation for interviews, as you're thinking about networking events, think about how can you emotionally connect to people. And you guys will know, like any, I get a lot of sales calls and um, anytime, you know, people want to sell you this platform or sign you up for this, da, 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 da. And um, a really, really good salesperson they have a picture of their family as a screensaver on their 
computer. And it's like the oldest trick in the book, you guys. Um, but they accidentally share their screen and then they laugh and they're like, oh, by the way, that's my wife and my two kids. Because they're trying to emotionally connect to you and have it not just be a business call. It's that you go, oh, wait, you're a human? I'm a human too. This is great. We can communicate. I have kids. I have a spouse. And it breaks the ice for them. And honestly, I, you know, in 10 sales calls, I've had one person that does it. But you're like, oh, this guy's good. You guys probably won't notice it. But this is one of those things that they all of a sudden get to break down the barriers that you've put in place walking into a sales call like oh this person's gonna waste my time they're gonna try and sell me something i don't trust them but when you see their kids and their dog you're like oh they're nice i like them their kid looks nice their wife looks nice her husband looks nice uh so making sure that you're connecting with your audience on an emotional level and so i always you know when i'm at networking events or when you're in any any situation where you have to emotionally connect somebody i always make sure that i have really good easy icebreakers just off the top of my head it's like hey did you um you know like did you see that the bright line opened it's a train that opened in miami going to orlando that's so exciting i'm thinking of taking my kids and then immediately the small talk turns into something more personal connected to business. So making sure that you guys are finding in how you weave in you being an informed professional into family. So you get to talk about Disney and you can laugh about something about taking your kids to Disney or to whatever thing it may be. Um, it might be a fair in your town. It might be a vacation spot. It might be, uh, but making sure that you're connecting to something personal. Uh, so the next one is the law of trust. Um, so trust really, truly is the foundation for effective communication. People are more likely to listen and to follow people that they trust. But how do you form that trust? This is the big, big question. When you are really, truly showing up in a true and an authentic way with somebody, then you automatically are planting seeds of trust with them. So when you're acknowledging that you had a tough time with a situation with your children, um, children are like the easiest, easiest in for somebody um, because everybody can relate to struggling with a child that, you know, and obviously you guys, you have to read the room is you have to say, oh, this person looks like a parent. Oh, this person's married. You have to, and your eyes have to constantly be doing that scanning for signs, for symbols, for, for things that would connect you to that person. Um, but when you are able to cut through the small talk and get to something that's real and authentic, then you're planting these seeds where someone get, begins to trust you. So I'm super intentional that like, if I, if I show up to like our team call, is that if I'm having a bad day, I will tell my team I'm having a bad day because that my hope is, is planting seeds of trust, is that I'm giving my team permission that, hey, you are allowed to have a bad day. And when you're thinking about, I'm not, I'm not proposing that you show up to an interview and tell the interviewer that you're having a bad day, but when you show up, to networking events, when you show up to any of the things you're, you're really, whatever you are feeling, when you see somebody, I was at a networking event a couple weeks ago and uh, me and this lady had kind of crossed in the parking lot and it was raining and it was just one of those things. And we could have immediately gone into small talk and I just kind of looked at her and I was like, man, I love going to these networking events, but sometimes, I'm just exhausted from the small talk. And she laughed. She was like, I know. And all of a sudden we had this instant connection is that we had this real authentic conversation. We had this trust. And then that turned into a great conversation where we connected to somebody else who was in the same business, who we could help, blah, 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 blah. But we would have 
had the small talk, we would have had that conversation that would have been surfacy and had no value if we had to plant those seeds of trust. So make sure when you're showing up for an interview or you're doing any of these networking events that you understand that trust is a foundation and how you build trust is through authenticity. And if you guys need more on that idea, and actually that transitions into my next point is authenticity. The next one is, is trust and authenticity. The way that you build trust is through authenticity. So the law of authenticity is that authenticity in communication breeds trust. So when I say, man, I'm having a bad day, when I say I don't like small talk, that I'm showing up not as this fake human being that is trying to, you know, be something that I'm not at this networking event, but by me showing up as genuine, as transparent, and as true to myself, then the person automatically can connect you and say, oh, I like this person because they're not like everybody else and they're not going to fake it. And um, you will find that a lot of leaders that in a real, real high level and CEO level roles, they're absolutely exhausted by going to these cheesy networking events that they have to go to where they have to shake hands and kiss babies and even think about professional athletes. It's exhausting for them because it's inauthentic. And it's hard for them because they don't know who they can trust. And so they're going, oh, if I tell somebody that I'm having a bad day and that person's a reporter, what are they going to say about me or who they're going to tell? But the beautiful thing is that most of us are, we can, I, that's why I never want to be one of those famous uh, soccer players. Um, but really, truly is that we get the ability to show up authentically, be genuine, be transparent. And you guys will laugh. Um, one of the leaders, Sarah Blakely and um, Jesse Itzler, it's a couple that she is a, was the former owner of Spanx. It's a women's, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mapule. That's a great example about um, Meghan Markle. Um, yeah, it's a perfect example. If you guys have watched that documentary on them. And so when she opened up to a reporter when she was postpartum and she just said, hey, this is really what I'm going through. Like, I'm exhausted. And it sent tidal waves through the world because all of a sudden she wasn't this stoic royal. She every woman on the planet could relate to her because they were like, oh, you look perfect and you did it, but you're also feeling this. And she got slaughtered by the media, by the royal family, by all of these things as a result of it. But this, she, she's an authentic person. And this is why people love and trust her. This is why people loved and trust Pr Princess Diana because she was authentic. So these are just, when you think about the figures in this world that really truly have made an impact in their communication, it's the ones that showed up authentically and they built trust. Um, so Sarah Blakely and um, Jesse Itzler, follow them on social media if you guys haven't. But Sarah is an incredible communicator because she's so real. She like posts these videos of her, her husband is like this juicing ice bath sauna. He runs hundred mile marathons, health freak. And she posts photos of her eating French fries and diet Cokes from McDonald's, you know, and people are like, all right, I like you girl, which a lot of celebrities hide that stuff and people connect. So when you think about how you show up in your interview process, how you show up in the world, there's going to be times that you can show your real, true, authentic self to someone and they can connect to you on a much less superficial way. So be genuine, be transparent, know that that authenticity fosters trust and really share your transition journey openly, including the challenges and the lessons that you've learned from your ship experience. So if you guys have had a, you know, tough transition, if you have had rejection, if you have had um, something difficult that has happened, there is nothing wrong 
with rehearsing that story and making yourself look like the hero. So when you had failure or when things went wrong, just being able to acknowledge it, talk about it and say, hey, I had this situation where I just communicated really poorly. This is what I said to this person. And I always tell a story about um, one of my employees, how I kind of overlooked a really personal situation that she was going through because I was super busy. And I would just boom, 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 do this, do that, do that, do that, delegating. And this penny drop moment for me where I said, hey, this isn't how I want to live as a leader. And I was admitting something that could be perceived as embarrassing or me being a poor leader, but actually the story provides strength because I'm saying I screwed up and this is how I recovered from my screw up. Um, and people go, all right, this, this individual can admit them when they're wrong. This individual can recognize, this individual can own and apologize. And that authenticity is what makes people want to hire you and work with you. Um, any Christian, anything I'm missing in any of this? I'm, I'm down to number uh, four, so I want to make sure that I'm not ranting. No, 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 no. I really like that one, the authenticity one. I think it's just what makes a difference. It's, it's a really now with, with, with us having like windows to people's private lives, kind of with all the social media, TikTok, Instagram, you get a glimpse of what they truly are behind scenes, behind the scenes. So yeah. even then, you know that a lot of it is staged. Um, yeah. but there's very few, um, I don't want to go into the, even in the influencer world, right. But there's very few of them out there that, that are very genuine and very human. like Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys follow Sarah Blakely, if you, and I think I've spoken about this before is that like one of the posts that I did that one of the top performing posts that I did on LinkedIn was a picture of me and my kids and talking about my kids walking in on a sales call and in the background and asking questions to the person on the screen. And because people see that authenticity and they connect to it, they go, oh, I've had that happen before. Um, and the other side of it is that Sarah, you know, she eating the French fries and the Diet Cokes and, you know, she posts funny pictures of her with her coffee mug that say she has all these coffee mugs that say funny things about like, you know, I don't know, coffee before wine or some silly things like that. that people can go, oh, I can relate. You're a human being. I'm a human being, too. Um, so this, and if you guys find that you struggle with authenticity at all, I would highly recommend that you read some or listen to, um, Brene Brown, um, that Brene Brown is an amazing, amazing speak. She's a researcher, uh, but she's a couple books daring greatly. Um, she has a thing on Netflix, so you could watch it quickly. And she just talks really about that. You can't actually have authentic relationships, um, you can't have real relationships without authenticity, without people being vulnerable and talking about their true selves. Um, so next one is the law of collaboration. So the law of collaboration is that effective communication most times involves collaboration. So it works with people working together achieve common goals. And being a former crew member, this is like an easy, easy story for you guys to tell is that you being able to give examples of when you had to work as a team with a very, very diverse group of people. And if you guys were on board and you ever had to go through a difficult transition where they were doing a reduction in headcount of um, certain positions, if they were doing efficiency programs, if they were doing anything that was a difficult message is being able to show how you worked through that message with a diverse group of people, you being able to acknowledge when you said something or did something that wasn't perfect and how you learn from it, and really demonstrating how you effectively work together to achieve common goals. So say that you had to achieve a rating, say that you had to achieve a revenue target. Being able to talk about collaboration is a next level to your communication because you're going i can get everybody on board the ship rowing in the same direction and not only can i do that but i can do it with people of different ages different races 
different nationalities, so many different things that that's what makes me stand out as a candidate. Um, so I talk about my experience at Amazon is that I was super intentional about the team that I hired is that we had a certain percentage of women on our team, which was really different for the Amazon delivery world. Um, African-American, Hispanic, um, and all different, sorry, let me keep some, all different ages. Um, so I think Edwin was in his 60s probably um, who worked for us, Christian, is that my goal was to principally have a diverse team and me as a leader be the one to communicate that we collaborate and we work together. That's a part of our culture, despite our differences. And being able to have those examples on the tip of your tongue and communicate how you did that, it's so, so, so important. Because this is a given powerhouse that you have being a former crew member, is collaboration is just the nature of the business to get a ship turned or over on turnaround day. Like, it just has to happen. So you being able to explain to potential employers how you did that. So the next one is law of expectation. And um, I read something that I thought was very funny. This is related to marriages. And again, I'm telling you guys this story because uh, this story will connect me to you. I just want to like weave in the tricks. I do the, a lot of this communication stuff naturally, but the law of expectations. So I read something recently that said um, that most people believe that the number one reason for divorce, divorce in the United States is 50%. And so um, the reason that everybody typically cites is money is that people have differences over money. And, but if you really dig down to it, um, this gentleman was presenting that he believes that the divorce rate is related to expectation. Is that we go into a relationship and we have an expectation that things are going to be a certain way. And then when this human being doesn't fulfill what our expectation was, flowers, dinner, celebrations, how they are as a parent, whatever that is. And his argument was you should not have expectations of anybody except for yourself. Um, is that you should just love people exactly who they are. But this law of expectation is that people, when you are a leader, people tend to rise to the expectation that you have of them. So if you are saying, you know, you're communicating to your team, you're communicating to yourself, you're communicating to your children, what you know that they are capable of, they get to do this internal work of looking at, oh, do I meet that? Do I meet that? Do I meet that? This person has this expectation of me. And you being able to communicate high expectations really truly is proven that it encourages performance. And if you think of the marriage analogy, most of the time when we're married, the communication that we have with our partner is you did not meet my expectation. And that other person gets to feel like a failure to the most important person in their life, right? But what he's saying in this point is that the law of expectation is being able to say that, hey, I want a job like this. I want an employee like this. I want, I see what this individual person is capable of, and I encourage them in this way to reach what I know their expectation is to be. So think about a performance conversation that you had with somebody talking about what the expectation, hey, you know, ABC Cruise Line is a phenomenal cruise line uh, to work with. Well, I I'll use one of my uh, companies, Ola Inc. is a phenomenal company to work with. One of the standards of what we do is we respond to all emails within 24 hours or not sooner. You're a really, really smart person. I know that that's going to, you're going to be like the type of person that answers emails in two hours. Uh, you're not even, 24 hours is laughable to you, isn't it? And then they, ah, oh, 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 oh. is that you are then communicating a very, very high expectation and you having confidence that that person can meet it. Uh, so really, truly, 
you being able to demonstrate examples of when expectations were high, and we all live this, you know, if somebody told you what working on a cruise ship would be like, you would never believe that you could do it. But when you get on board and you see that everybody else is doing it, all of a sudden your personal expectations for yourself are insane. And you guys, in all reality, as you, when you think about your life on board, you know, you were up and dressed and at an 8 a.m. meeting. You went to the gym at some point in the day. You did your emails. You did guest facing things. You uh, took a nap at some point. You had a collaborative dinner um, either with your team members or with guests. And then you go on land and you can't get to the gym, right? Like, and you're, you're like, how did I operate at this level? Well, you operated at this level because everybody was operating at that level, right? So proximity is power. The more that we set our expectations for ourselves and connect ourselves with people that all live at that level, you'll see how your life begins to transform because all of a sudden when you're sitting around a table and your friends happen to be people that go to the gym every single day, and you can't contribute to the conversation, you're like, shit, I better step it up and get to the gym, right? And so you have a choice, either run in that realm of people, run in that realm of people where their career is high, where their applications, where their communications, where what they're doing, their resilience to failure is high, and you are able to communicate your aspirations to your potential employers, then all of a sudden you're showing up with the spirit of excellence. The cruise lines that we work for, they're successful. They're operating at the level that they are is because they're setting the bar really, really high. If somebody wrote on paper that people would be operating a cruise line with these types of things, nobody would believe it. And that's when you guys begin to tell your story and say, hey, this is how I operate as a leader. This is what my day looked like. And you will blow the socks off of somebody who wants to hire you because there's going to be nobody really that can compare to what your standard of living is. It's, hey, this is what work looks like for me. Okay. So expect it. That's a really challenging one because that's a personal and professional one. It's going, hey, People rise to the expectations you have for them. So this is how I did it for my employees, but how are you doing it for yourself? I think that's a really, really important question. How are you setting the expectations for yourself and how are you surrounding yourself by people that operate at that same level as you, okay? And don't fall in, and I always, I have a very dear person in my life that, um, that they, I have a dear, very dear person in my life and I was sitting around with their friends and all the friends complain about how they don't have money. All they talk about is how they don't have money, they don't have money, they don't have money, they don't have money. And it's become a part of their normal dialogue. And so I very politely challenged this person to say, hey, is that actually true? You know? I know you're hearing this dialogue around you, but is it true that like, when I look at this city, when I look at this country, I see people that have money. And as soon as you poke holes in it, you start going, oh, do I become the person of change around this table that's having a different conversation? Or do I begin to surround myself with the people that don't speak in this way? Um, so expectation and raising up. The next one is, the law of the picture. So this is about taking what our experience have been and remembering that people often remember images and illustrations. And we talked about this when we talked about storytelling. So if you guys haven't listened to our storytelling um, webinar, please make sure you listen to it, is that when you can bring people along the journey with you and they can walk through your story and they can be there and they can and i think about like telling your most embarrassing moment and i'll tell mine um just to bring you guys on the story so you see it is that using visual aids using metaphors figuring a way you can enhance your message so 
every pastor on the planet uses this technique for the most part, but typically pastors are really, really good communicators. They've been trained by their dads, by their dad, it's a generational thing. Um, but when you can bring somebody along on a story with you, and I'll tell you guys my story, my most embarrassing moment, um, cause you will be able to visualize it is that the people remember the point that you were trying to make. Right? So my, I was in seventh grade and I am a great singer, believe it or not. I sing very, very well. I'm not, I'm not Filipino karaoke level, I don't think, but I had a voice teacher uh, for many, many years. And um, I didn't, in seventh grade, I had no fear. I had no fear. I was going to be in the talent show and I was singing Bette Midler, The Rose. You guys, some say love this one. I practiced, I had a cassette tape with the background music on it, the whole nine yards. And I had a beautiful, um, don't velvet take yourself. Green, you just say that yourself. <laughs> I know. I had a velvet green dress with like a big rose in the middle, and I had heels that matched. It was a very exciting day. How old are you at that age? I'm think like 13, maybe. And so I walk out onto the stage and I'm getting ready. And somebody had hit play on the cassette, but they didn't turn up the volume. And so when the music started, I was lost. I didn't know where, what words were what. And this wasn't a CD where you could just like hit back. You had to, or or a uh, YouTube or Spotify where you just hit the back arrow. You have to like put the tape and rewind the tape. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm trying to stop them and get them. And um, so on, as I'm standing there on stage and they weren't gonna like rewind the tape and I didn't know where I am, I said, Oh shit, on the microphone in front of the entire school. And I'm like this goody two shoes little, little girl. The entire audience starts laughing. The principal is like curled over in the corner. And normally you get in trouble in like seventh grade for swearing, let alone swearing on a microphone in front of the whole school. But for me, that was a very pivotal moment in my life because after that I became afraid to sing publicly. And it would, and so you guys all of a sudden, while I'm telling you this story, you guys have that feeling inside of you, right? You're like, oh, that's embarrassing. Like you can laugh about the dress, you can laugh about the music, but then you connect and you go, oh yeah, I've had things that have happened from to me in my life that have prevented me from wanting to do other things, right? Now I don't care about telling you the story and I'll sing, it doesn't really matter. Um, but for me to, for you as a person, to be able to bring people on that journey, to take them into the room, to tell them what you're wearing, to tell and do it in a super concise way, a very, very concise and clear way that you're getting to the point, you're making them laugh somewhere along the journey. and as a crew member, because of what you were exposed to, you have a thousand stories like this. So pick your top 10, your top five of, you know, embarrassment, of conflict, of, you know, all these different moments. I remember getting screamed at by a guest during tender, um, uh, during tender loading and me having to go around the corner and cry because this guest was so mean to me, like that, taking people through all of those stories and you potentially you can use visual aids you can use storytelling techniques is to walk you through walk them through what that journey is and paint this incredibly vivid, vivid picture of kind of the superhero that you were in your job and how this experience formulated you into being better for them for your potential employer um, so the law of the picture and then if you need more information check out the storytelling one uh, the next one is law of empowerment. So I'm just going to recap. We talked about the law of the lid, the law of connection, the law of trust, the law of authenticity, the law of collaboration, of expectation, and the law of the picture. So on, we're on number eight. Um, the next one is the law of empowerment. So empower others through your communication by giving them the tools and the knowledge that they need to succeed. So really truly is that you guys all know these communicators that all they're doing is talking at you right that they're talking at you they're telling you how great that they are 
when you are able to use your knowledge and your experience to empower others to grow and to believe in them, then you really truly begin to shift from a communicator to a leader to a mentor that you're able to share insights from your career and you're able to help your colleagues and your teammates succeed. So think about experiences when you had someone new on your team as a leader, when you had somebody in your life, you can even use a situation uh, with your children if you have children to talk about how, yeah, I could do this for my kid, but when I have them do it on their own, then they learn the skills, they have more confidence. I think of something as silly as um, letting your kids get dressed, is that it's such a silly thing um, that, you know, many parents, their kids are like 10 years old and they're still dressing them. But really, truly, your kid could probably dress themselves at like three. Um, but talking about how you empower someone to do something so that they can push themselves is an incredible, incredible thing of communication. It shows your leadership skills and it shows how you breathe life into other people to do something that is out of their comfort zone. And uh, my team will attest to this all the time is that I'm, I'm a master empowerer slash delegator slash, um, you know, what rolls downhiller um, is that I'm like, I know you can do it. it Wilhelmina got to do the social media um, recently is that I'm like, I know you can figure this out. You're so smart. Da, 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 da. Is that really truly is showing examples of how your communication style empowered and grew somebody. Um, the next one's the law of responsibility. So empowerment and responsibility. So taking responsibility for your message and its impact. Really taking your words seriously. And effective communicators understand the consequences of their words. So you as a leader, you're going to show up in so many different scenarios where you have to communicate to your team and you being able to have examples of when you communicated poorly and when you recovered from that communication is when you said, oh, I apologize. I said that a little bit too directly. Hey, I don't know if I'm coming across in the right way. And you're able to acknowledge that when you have moments that you're communicating in a tone that's too harsh. I'm a very direct communicator. And so I many, many times I get on this tangent and I just start going and going and going. And I have to come back and I have to go, okay, now I know that I'm saying what I'm saying. Da, 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 da. You have to understand that as a leader that you have to acknowledge the power that your words have and having examples of a time when you communicated too directly to somebody and you had to go back and say, hey, I want to make sure that I meant it this way, but it may have come across this way. That's when you start planting seeds of people trusting you and you acknowledging that you're responsible for your words. Um, and next 10, the law of the audience. This is going to be my last one, you guys, because we just have a couple minutes left, so I don't want to go over. So the law of the audience is making sure that you're tailoring your message to a specific audience, right? And knowing what that audience can handle from you is effectively communicate, effective communicators really truly consider the needs and really the emotional maturity of the listener. So knowing that you can communicate to your leadership team in a certain way that's direct, that's on point, guys, we gotta do this, 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 by this date, da, da, da. Whereas the employees, you probably have to be more fluffy with them. You have to be more encouraging. Why? Because you have not planted, and the analogy I always use is a piggy bank, every single relationship that you have in your life is that you're making deposits into the piggy bank and when you make deposits into a fam into your spouse into your kids into a friend into an employee when you make enough deposits into that person and they have security then you can begin to make withdrawals so in my leadership teams because i spend a lot of time with them 
it's easier for me to make a withdrawal because I've been making deposits, okay? And also each individual person, some people are gonna need more deposits than others. And you're gonna learn that the hard way. You're gonna learn that the hard way when you make a withdrawal and the person freaks out. And then you're like, oh, I guess I didn't have money in the bank to make that withdrawal from you right now. Is being able to learn how many deposits you have versus your employees. Is that your employees, they might see you once a month. And so when you are trying to make a withdrawal from them, then all of a sudden they're like, wait, she's asking me for something. I guess I got to do it because she's a boss. But you don't want to make a withdrawal from somebody where there begins to get spiked because you put no money into the account. So just by walking in and you guys have seen leaders, <laughs> hotel directors, captains, division heads going in there and patting somebody on the back, a cleaner on the back and saying, hey, that's thank you for doing that. That's really, really great. I appreciate that. Look at your attention to detail. Wow, you're amazing and then keep walking. That deposit from that captain or that hotel director gives them so much credit in the bank account. That cleaner is gonna give them the chance to make a withdrawal anytime that they want versus the cleaner that all they get is the division head that's making a withdrawal, withdrawal. Did you do it that way? Why didn't you do it that way? Go and do that. Go da 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 da. You guys all know that leader, that boss that you've had, that all they're doing is making withdrawals out of you. So this is really truly making sure that you know who you're talking to and you know how much you poured into that person. And I'm adding my deposit withdrawal onto it, but making sure that you know, when public speakers talk about this all the time is that they're literally walking into an audience and they know sometimes when they're walking to an audience that's already sold on their message and their product versus walking into an audience that thinks they're an idiot, right? So they have to work really, really hard to tailor their message to make sure they're saying the right thing at the right time. So as you go in in your communication, make sure that you know and you understand your audience from potential employers to colleagues and make sure and give examples of how you can tailor your communication to fit different audiences you communicate to, right? Okay, so we had about, I'm gonna leave you guys hanging because we have about, uh, we have six more that we, I'm gonna read them to you, but that means you guys just have to go to our blog post and listen to them. The next one's the law of the heart. People are more likely to be influenced by those they feel care about them. I think that has to go with the deposits and withdrawals. So show genuine concern for your audience. Law of readiness. Timing is crucial in communication. Be aware when the audience is most receptive to your message. And I'll say this, the, ob, the law of readiness, I think well, like one of the most powerful lessons about re readiness is around anger. It's, you guys have heard this advice, but none of us seem to follow it, is that you never call or speak to somebody when you're angry, is that you are not ready to communicate effectively when you are angry. Because your whole brain has this massive fog in front of you of your emotion that you're feeling. So being able to ready yourself and know when you're able to communicate a message, message to somebody. Hungry or hungry. <laughs> or hungry, that's a great point. Or hungry. Law of patience, so effective communication often requires patience. Um, not all messages will be understood immediately. Um, law of perseverance, so this is about continuing to refine your skills learn 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 and this kind of has to connect to the law of the lid consistent effort leads to improvement so there's no excuse to say that i'm not a great communicator i don't like public speaking well freaking practice practice it practice 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 i practice with everybody i talk to everybody i'm like i my friends laugh at me because i know the i know the whole life story of the lady at dunkin donuts coffee because all I'm doing is practicing. I genuinely care about her. I know that her mom was sick and she was having to be the caretaker of her mom. I know her mom passed away. I know she lived. I know she couldn't find a boyfriend because she was taking care of her mom. Da, 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 da. Effectively practicing your communication constantly because it's only going to help you get better. The law of sacrifice. Um, so effective communication really requires you sacrifice your own interests for the greater good of the audience. So there's the old saying that God gave us two ears and one mouth is that we should be listening 
double the time that we're speaking. And, you know, I find myself on conference calls. I have to put myself on mute because I will interrupt all day long. Um, but really, truly, and I'm great, grateful to be surrounded by Wilhelmina and Christian, who are incredible listeners. Um, but I have to give them space, right? I have to give them space to speak. So making sure that you're sacrificing what is in your head and what you feel you need to say. And then law of legacy is leaving a lasting legacy through your communication. So your words can continue to inspire and influence people after you're gone. So making sure that you truly, truly understand the impact of your words that it can have on people's lives is that you can be known for being somebody that takes withdrawals, or you can be known for being somebody who takes deposits or gives deposits. I want to be the person who gives deposits, constant deposits. And then when I ask for a withdrawal, people are thrilled because there's so much credit in the account. So that's really, truly legacy. So you guys, this book, if you haven't read it, please read it. The summary is here. But really, really think about how you apply this to your life when you practice it. And again, all of John, if you haven't read some of John Maxwell's books, I would recommend that you pick up, even if you listen to the summary, audible, whatever, whatever. If you are, we call it doom scrolling. On um, If you're doom scrolling on social media, put a timer on. Say you can do it for 15 minutes. Spend the other 45 minutes at night listening to something that feeds your brain in your future.